welcome back to Desert Have a Garden. Today I want to share with you my recipe for polenta sourdough bread. This is a delicious and moist country style bread that is really kind of a lot of texture. It's actually my dad's favorite type of bread. So what you do is you make a regular sourdough type of bread and you add in some cooked corn grits. And I like to use Bob's Red Mill coarse ground cornmeal and um, any kind will really work for this. It adds moisture and flavor and texture to your sourdough bread. So this is a recipe you are going to want to plan a little bit in, in advance for because it will take a little additional time with cooking the corn grits. You need to cook those and then allow them to cool completely before beginning to make your bread. You don't want to kill off that wonderful wild yeast in your sourdough starter by too much heat. So let's go ahead and get started. In order to make the polenta, first you need to add one cup of water and bring it to a boil. And then we will add... When the water has come to a boil, add in one third cup of the cornmeal and give it a good stir with a whisk. If there are some clumps, it's not a big deal because that just adds more texture to your final loaf. So you give it a good stir and we will boil it for about two to three minutes, but you may want to turn the temperature on the flame down a little bit. Now that the cornmeal has been simmering for two to three minutes, it's starting to thicken up. Give it a little whisk and then we will remove it from heat and cover it to allow it to thicken and you will also allow it to com cool completely before using in the bread. I wanted to show you here what I am using as my cornmeal. I buy this in bulk because I do go through a lot of my ingredients. It is the medium grind cornmeal that is available from Bob's Red Mill. And I actually order through Azure Standard as I do most of my ingredients. I'll put a link below if you wanna check them out. I have allowed my polenta to cool quite some time. So now it is absolutely room temperature and you'll see that it is quite solid here and the moisture that we use in our recipe will depend on how much moisture there is between the cornmeal as well as the starter. Let's go ahead and get started with making our dough. Our first ingredient is six cups of flour. Next is three teaspoons salt, two tablespoons oil, I use coconut oil, one cup of your prepared corn grits, and here's the water. It varies greatly depending on the moisture. I use one and a half cups, but start with one and it may be up to two cups of water. And lastly, one cup of starter. And then we will begin the bread machine on the dough setting. If you are using, if you are using a KitchenAid mixer, you can use uh, just the regular dough hook on the KitchenAid mixer to do the same thing. I keep a squirt bottle of pure filtered water handy in order to add a little bit of extra hydration to the dough if it's not quite where I want it to be. So I give it a good squeeze with my hand and feel if it's quite tacky enough. And I think that this could be a little bit more moist to be a little bit wetter and a little more tacky. So I give it a good spray down and then allow it to keep hydrating as it is mixing. The bread machine has completed the dough cycle and you can see the dough has formed together but this is a rather sticky dough and what I like to do is put it into a container where it will rise and I use just my regular filtered water again and give it a good squirt. Unlike commercial yeast spreads, it won't stick to the edge and that won't damage its structure so you can go ahead and put it in there without oiling it. So you can use your hand for this 
and help it into the bucket. And don't worry about shaping it at this point. We will have the opportunity to do that at a later time. And next I give it another squirt and then I cover it with plastic wrap and allow it to rest for an hour. After an hour has passed, I go ahead and turn out the dough and begin my first shaping. And now that hour time frame does not have to be exact. Um, an hour is a good amount of time, but if it's longer, it's fine. If it's shorter, I would allow at least 30 minutes. So we have our dough here and using my little scraper, I lift it around and it's a little bit on the sticky side you can see, but it's not terribly sticky. And you start pulling the corners in and folding them over each other. And ultimately we're making it into a round shape. So I'm pulling in each little bit onto itself. And if you get it a little bit stuck, go ahead and lift it up and just keep folding it in on itself until you get a somewhat firm round ball. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. It's getting a little more resistant to pull in as it's getting more tight in the dough. And then we flip it over, that's the bottom. And here's the top. And using my the heels of my hands and working them under, I'm forming it into a round ball. And you can see it's still a little bit sticky and so the faster you move, the better it works and the less it sticks. Next, we will put it back into our bowl after we have sprayed it with some more water. So go ahead and lift that up and dump it in there. Give it a couple more squirts of water. We wanna make sure it stays nice and hydrated where it doesn't form a crust on the dough at all. Cover it with wrap and we'll allow it to sit approximately another hour. After an hour of rising, we are ready to shape our bread for the final shaping and the final rise. So most people don't have Bannetton baskets, but if you do, this is a great time to use it. Otherwise, any old colander will work, and this recipe is for two loaves. So I take a tea towel and just press it down into a colander, and this will double as your Bannetton basket. Use a little bit of flour and sprinkle in there so the dough does not stick to the towel. And the same goes for the Bannetton. And in this case, because we are making the polenta sourdough, we'll also use a little bit of the corn grits. And that will give it a nice rustic top to it. And so here we're just sprinkling to make sure it doesn't stick, but it also gives it a little bit of added texture. Now that these are prepared, we'll scoot them off to the side and we are ready to work with our dough. So again, we just turn it out onto the surface using your scraper to help you get it all out of there. And you wanna be careful not to rip it. Um, it shouldn't rip easily, it's pretty strong dough. And here we're going to divide it into two pieces. If you wanna be quite precise, you can use a scale. And when I'm doing my market bread, I do. I weigh out all of my loaves to be two pounds each. But in this case, since it's just for the fun of it, I make two separate pieces that are approximately half. Now for the final shaping, it's the same as the first shaping. We just take these little pieces and pull the corners up and stick them into the middle. And this dough is kind of sticky, that's okay. It gives it better air bubbles inside when we have a good stick to it. The more hydration, the bigger the bubbles. Okay, now it's starting to get firmed up and it's all pinched together here. You don't have to worry about that being beautiful, that's the bottom of the loaf. I use my scraper to flip it over. And here we do our round shaping and it's a nice neat ball here I will use some flour and I'm putting this on here to keep it from sticking in the basket and when you have this nice dusted round ball 
upside down, so this is the top, you want the top to go into the bottom of the basket. And there it goes, and you see the bottom of the bread. I cover it up with my little Vanatin cover. And then we will repeat for the second loaf. Now we allow these two loaves to rise overnight or approximately another 10 hours before we preheat the oven to 425 degrees and begin baking. It has been 15 hours since the final shaping of the bread, so really it's just the next morning. And now we will take these loaves of bread and put them onto a parchment lined cookie sheet. Now I'm currently using an oven that is gas, it's not convection, and I find that I often burn on the bottom before I finish baking. So I am actually using double stacked cookie sheets. The insulation between the two layers of cookie sheets helps keep the bottom from burning before it ends up cooking. So simply turn out the loaves because remember the bottom was facing up and now you can see the top here and the same with the second and you can see that there's a little bit of a difference between the banneton basket and the colander so the banneton has that nice swirly design on it and I'm going to use a lom. you can use a razor blade or a very sharp knife to score the tops of the loaves and for these I kind of like to do four little strokes there and the same over here and this allows the bread to expand on those predictable lines rather than splitting wherever it pleases next we will place it in a preheated 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes i also preheat a pan in there just an old junky pan on the bottom rack that I will pour a couple cups of water into and that helps steaming. The steaming allows the crust to remain flexible and continue rising and puffing up. With sourdough we don't get a lot of rise overnight and so we really count on what's called oven spring in a hot oven with steam to get the bread to puff up. Here is the bread at 25 minutes and this oven doesn't cook exactly evenly so I rotate them a little bit and I'm going to put them in for at least five minutes more. I don't like how pale they look. Now that's looking better. I have allowed the bread to cool completely and now I will slice it using a sharp serrated knife. In this bread, you can see all the beautiful texture in it with those extra little corn grits in there. So let's take a look. Isn't that lovely? There's only one thing left to do and that is our taste test. So I brought in my skilled taste tester to give it a little bit of a try. I wish I had my dad here to try it out because it is his favorite. So go ahead and give it a taste. Let's see what you think. So this is a really easy way to make a sourdough loaf with polenta in it. And I like all the added texture of the corn grits and it just kind of gives you that at home country feel. It has a lot more moisture in it and it retains that moisture. So. It makes a wonderful sandwich or even toast. I like to have it with a meat sandwich. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Always reply down in the comments and let me know if you try this out for yourself. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the future. Mm. That tastes good.